Friday, of course, always a very special night here at The Late Show. Because every Friday, we set up a hypothetical cage match between two things. Donut versus bagel. <laughs> Duck with a chainsaw versus cat with a nail gun. <laughs> nail gun has the range advantage over the chainsaw, but neither animal has opposable thumbs, so it's a free-for-all. <laughs> then here's what we do. We post those matchups on Twitter, America's number one place for mindless conflict. And you, the people, decide the victor. This is... I'm so excited for Friday Night Fights. Welcome to Friday Night Fights, everybody. Let's look at the results from last week. My opponent was John Hodgman, and our first fight pitted Bigfoot against the Tooth Fairy. Hodgman went Tooth Fairy, who won with 56% of the vote on Twitter. And I'm sure the Tooth Fairy is out there someplace celebrating by snorting a big pile of ground up baby teeth. <laughs> That's how she stays up all night. The second fight pitted the Apple Genius with a switchblade against a Walmart greeter with a crossbow. <laughs> Hodgman picked the Walmart greeter and got 70% of the vote. So, John Hodgman beat me in both fights. No hard feelings, John. I just want to say congratulations. I really enjoyed our friendship while it lasted. <laughs> now it's time to meet my latest opponent. This week, he's an actor. Writer, comedian, comedian. You, know you know him from, from Mr. Show, Show. Bojack Bo Horseman, and, and now as the host of No You, you Shut Up, Up on the Fusion Network, Network. it's it Paul M. Tonkin! Paul, I'm here. Good to see you. Please. Ladies and gentlemen, good to see you. Thank you. Always good to see you, Paul. Always good to see you, Stephen. Paul, uh, you're a worthy opponent. I've always said that. Now, what does the F stand for in Paul F. Tompkins? Fascism. It's a family name. <laughs> All right. Tonight's matchup is going to fill you with childhood nostalgia. Did you have a happy childhood? Let me just say, it's great to be an adult. <laughs> well, hop in the station wagon, kids, because Daddy's taking you to the most brutal birthday party ever. Because we're pitting the animatronic Chuck E. Cheese band versus the Knights of Medieval Times. <laughs> this is Elva. This is like brutal the... Elva. Oh. Let's go to the tail of the tape. <laughs> Coming in at five members strong and a combined weight of over 1,500 pounds of fur covered steel and hydraulics, the Chuck E. Cheese band is the dead eyes of a psychopath and works together like a well oiled machine because that's exactly what they are. Strengths include rock and roll attitude, perfect pitch, and a cheap way to convince gullible children that you took them to Disney World. <laughs> Weaknesses include my cousin looked behind the curtain one time and told me they were just sitting there looking dead. But Chuck and the gang better watch out because they're up against the Knights of Medieval Times. <laughs> Weighing in at over 3,000 pounds of man, horse, and free soda refills, these knights are ready to joust, kill, and bust tables if Brian calls in sick. Strengths include ability to go medieval on your ass and the pent-up anger of actors working in dinner theater. Weaknesses include no, no knowledge of actual medieval times. So what do you think, PTF? Which one you got in this fight? Well, Steven, I think I gotta go all the way 1,000% with the CECB, the Chuck E. Cheese Band. You're crazy. I'm crazy. You are crazy. I'm the crazy. Chuck E. Cheese Band, the Chuck E. Cheese Band has no weapons. I'm going with the Knights, who are fully armored and have swords. How do you beat that? Oh. How do you beat that? Let me ask, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Are swords still made of metal? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you want to stick a metal weapon into an opponent coursing with electricity, why don't you stay home and joust your toaster with a butter knife? All right, what I do is I take my pitcher of free refills and I pour it into the Chuck E. Cheese band, and they short out, game over. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you're going to try to short out these robots yes. that have learned how to play a flying V guitar? What makes you think they haven't now learned to self-repair? They don't have any learning ability. They're not an AI system. They're merely hydraulics being run by a guy named Andy who's an 18-year-old assistant manager. <laughs> 
first of all, that Andy, he's one to watch. <laughs> Secondly, mm -hmm. they have been standing there in front of people, disinterestedly shoving pizza into their faces as they're trying to play their passion. You don't think they're gonna absorb not just pizza grease, but also <laughs> they're going to adapt. They're going to adapt? Yes! Really? Yeah! Okay, you want to talk about dangerous? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm talking about actors who cannot get a job, so they are, they are, they are fighting in a sand pit for the amusement of children. <laughs> My knights have so much pent-up rage, they don't need the weapons. They'll just tear your robots apart piece by piece. How? Okay. The moment somebody gets a text saying, oh, guess what, you got a call back for that Arid Extra Dry commercial, the whole squad disintegrates. Okay, look, <laughs> I just, I don't want to live in a world, I don't want to live in a world where robots who are mindless and godless can defeat Christian knights who have sworn to take back Jerusalem just as soon as the second show is over. All right? You and your precious religion. Okay, let's just agree, let's agree to disagree. Let's agree that we disagree. All right, fair enough. Let us know what you think, America. Head over to Twitter and vote. Who would win in a fight? Animatronic Chuck E. Cheese Band versus the Knights of Medieval Times. The polls close Wednesday at midnight. <laughs> the, polls, the polls close Wednesday at midnight, so get out there and make your voice heard. Anyone can win except Marco Rubio. He can't seem to win anything. That does it for...